Assalamu alaikum my dear students. I hope you all are doing good. Now today in this lecture we are going to talk about another type of membrane transport and that is going to be vesicular transport. Now vesicular transport is actually when we are transporting the larger substances or macromolecules across the cell membrane and these larger substances and these uh, macromolecules are actually packed in the vesicles and in the form of these vesicles, these substances are transported across the cell membrane that is actually called as vesicular transport. Now this vesicular transport actually in includes the uh, taking the substances into the cell as well as taking the substances out of the cell. When we are, when this vesicular transport or via this vesicular transport, we are taking these substances like these macromolecules or larger substances into the cell, that process is called as endocytosis. And if we are taking these substances out of the cell, that is called as exocytosis. So endocytosis simply is taking these substances into the cell and exocytosis means uh, taking these substances, these larger substances or macromolecules out of the cell. Right now, let us talk about this about this uh, endocytosis and exocytosis in a little more detail with uh, these suitable examples. Now, let us talk about the endocytosis first. So, endocytosis is actually uh, again I am telling this endocytosis is when we are taking these substances, these larger molecules, and these macromolecules into the cell that is called as endocytosis. Now, endocytosis is actually uh, uh, divided into three types. That means we can take these substances, macromolecules, larger substances into the cell by three mechanisms actually. That is we are, we are telling the three types of endocytosis. Now the three types of endocytosis is uh, the first type we are going to talk about is actually called as phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the first type of the endocytosis and we will talk about this phagocytosis with the best example and then endocytosis has the second type that is called as pinocytosis and then the third type of endocytosis is the receptor mediated endocytosis. Okay, so the first type is phagocytosis, second type is pinocytosis, and third type is receptor mediated endocytosis. Now let us talk about all these three types one by one with, uh, and let's understand these, these mechanisms actually by, with, with the help of examples. Now the first type is phagocytosis, and this phagocytosis is also called as cellular eating. It is just like that cell is eating something, cell is taking that solid particle, solid substance into the cell. So fine, so it is called as cellular eating. Now, this phagocytosis, whenever we talk about phagocytosis, the cell which is actually uh, involved in this process of phagocytosis, the best example is our white blood cells. And in white blood cells, the cells which are involved in this process are our neutrophils and our macrophages. Now, let us suppose I draw a, a neutrophil here. I draw the cell membrane of a neutrophil here. So, here is a neutrophil. And uh, suppose this neutrophil has reached the tissue where the tissue which is actually invaded by a bacteria because these white blood cells they actually help us to fight against the uh, various infections. Suppose there is a bacterial infection in our body and that bacteria has invaded our tissue. Now whenever the bacteria suppose here is the tissue here is the tissue and that tissue is invaded by a bacteria and here is the bacteria now that neutrophil from the blood circulation will come out 
of the blood vessels and it will reach that infected tissue. Now, how it is reaching there? There are two processes actually. There will be chemotaxis, there will be uh, diapedesis, right? And then diapedesis is actually the process of these white blood cells uh, coming out of the uh, blood vessels and going into the tissue site the infected tissue site. Fine. So here is the bacteria and this bacteria actually uh, we need to break down this bacteria. We need to kill this bacteria because uh, now for that reason this uh, this neutrophil has reached there. Now this neutrophil has to go under the process of phagocytosis and for the phagocytosis process what happens is that this neutrophil in the cell membrane uh, actually it is doing certain changes and it is actually making these changes these changes will be there in the cell membrane and there will be like these false arms made by the neutrophil and these false these these arms are actually created by in the in the neutrophil cell membrane just to engulf that bacteria right and these 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 changes in the cell membrane uh, it is done by the neutrophil with the exact with the with the help of the cytoskeleton that is actually the microfilaments actin filaments which are present there and those actin is actually responsible for this change in the cell membrane of the neutrophils for the process of phagocytosis for actually engulfing that bacteria. Now what happens is that these two ends eventually what happens that these two ends of these of the cell membrane actually fuses together and when they fuse together for example here and here and this this vesicle here this round structure here actually comes into the cell and in this vesicle we have inside that bacteria which we have just engulfed and we have taken it inside. One more time, we have the phagocytosis process, it is called as the cellular heating and phagocytosis is actually followed by the white blood cells most importantly the neutrophils and neutrophils actually engulf the bacteria here here we are taking the example of bacteria that bacteria that bacteria actually uh, which is which is there in the tissue that uh, neutrophil actually engulfs that bacteria and takes it inside now how it engulfs it it's, it makes certain changes in the cell membrane with the help of those actin actin filaments and that then eventually what happens the for, for example these are two arms uh, these are two arms which are made by the cell membrane of the neutrophil. Eventually what happens is that these two arms fuse together and the vesicle which we have uh, which we have there that actually buds off that actually goes inside the cell mem th that goes inside the cell and now we have that vesicle and inside the vesicle we have that bacteria which we have engulfed. Now this vesicle which contains the bacteria inside is called as phagosome. It is called as phagosome. Now, here these, these arms, these structures which are made in the membrane of the, of the neutrophils, these are called as pseudopodium. Pseudopodium. Right. So this pseudopodium is actually uh, is actually uh, done by the uh, microfilaments which are present in the neutrophils. That is the actin filaments. Now this phagosome once we are taking it inside. So now we have taken the bacteria into the cell. That bacteria is a macromolecule. We have taken the bacteria into the cell but that bacteria we have taken into the cell in the form of this vesicle. So it is called as the endocytosis and in this case it is the type of endocytosis we call it as phagocytosis because we have taken a solid structure into the cell. Right. Now what happens to this phagosome is this phagosome actually comes in contact with another structure there in the cell and that structure is an important structure there that is a cell organelle there and that cell organelle is called as lysosome. 
because what we what we need to do with this bacteria is we need to break down this bacteria we need to uh, we, we need to digest this bacteria and in order to break down this bacteria in order to digest this bacteria what we need is we need enzymes and those enzymes are actually present in the cell organelle we call it as lysosome and what happens is that this phagosome come in contact with lysosome and they actually both these this is also a vesicle and this is also a vesicle and both these vesicles they actually fuse together and what we get is we get the uh, combined structure of, bo of both these we have a phagosome and then we have a lysosome Okay, here we have the lysosomal enzymes and then we have the, uh, the bacteria. Here we have the bacteria. Now this bacteria needs to be degraded and it will be degraded by these enzymes, the hydrolytic enzymes which are present in the lysosomes. Actually what is present there on the on the this vesicular membrane is we have the proton pumps there, proton ATPase and once they, they fuse together those proton pumps are actually what they do is they take the hydrogen ions into the vesicle and the inside the vesicle it becomes very acidic and that acidic medium actually activates these lysosomal enzymes and these lysosomal enzymes start breaking down that bacteria right so we have uh, we have done the uh, first part of the endocytosis that is called as the phagocytosis and phagocytosis is simply the cellular eating and this phagocytosis process is shown by the uh, by the white blood cells the neutrophils the macrophages and they actually they actually show this process of phagocytosis for taking the bacteria or for, for taking that microorganism into the cell Right. Now, we, we have to talk about the second type of the endocytosis that is called as the pinocytosis. Now, pinocytosis, just like phagocytosis is cellular eating, now this pinocytosis is actually cellular drinking. Cellular drinking. Now, cellular drinking, as the name indicates, it is actually when the cell is actually drinking something. Right? It is not taking that solid substance into the cell, it is taking some, some liquid particle into the cell. Right? Now, uh, in order to understand this pinocytosis, pinocytosis is actually followed by the different cells in our body, but the best example to understand pinocytosis is our intestine. Right? Now, we have, suppose we have the gastrointestinal tract here, we have the stomach. And after the stomach, we have the duodenum. And then we have the small intestine, jejunum and helium. Now suppose we are zooming here on one cell of the small intestine. Right. Now, in the lumen of this, this small intestine, in the lumen of the small intestine, what happens is, yeah, in the lumen of the, here is the, here is the cell in this intestine and we have to talk about the uh, endocytosis that means we have to take something into the cell and that should be cellular drinking we have to take some liquids liquid particles or liquid substances into the cell now suppose here is the liquid here is the water for example in the lumen of the small intestine and in this water we have some dissolved substances there for example there is in the uh, dissolved form there in this water where we have the glucose molecules right now we have to take this water and inside this water we have in the dissolved form we have the glucose molecules there now we have to take this water along with this glucose molecules into the cell it is actually it is actually uh, very very important for for these cells to taste the extracellular fluid Right. Now, in the intestinal uh, intestinal cell, it is actually following the process of pinocytosis. Now, what it does is uh, actually this water, this water along with this dissolved glucose, we have to take into the cell. Now, what happens is that this cell actually forms a small pit. 
imagination kind of imagination and in that in imagination now we have all these these water molecules and along with the mo water molecules what we have we have these glucose molecules but these glucose molecules are in the dissolved form right so uh, now once there is this imagination form this imagination may these this water molecules will go inside and then these along with the dissolved these glucose molecules will go inside that imagination now what happens is that this end of the uh, of this cell membrane will fuse together like this this will eventually fuse together and what will happen is that this vesicle is will actually bud off and it will go into the cell right so whenever we have to take some fluid substance into the cell there is not a solid structure like bacteria we have talked about uh, in the phagocytosis there is a fluid sub particles there is water and in that water we have those dissolved dissolved particles most importantly here there is glucose molecules and then we have to take that water along with that dissolved form of glucose into the cell then cell membrane will form an imagination and then the, in that imagination this water will be sucked in along with that glucose molecules and then eventually what will happen is that cell membrane will fuse again and that vesicle will bud off and will go into the cell and <coughs> then that for example this is glucose this glucose inside the cell will be actually used in different jo hai, metabolic processes now uh, we have inside we have this water substance water molecules and then we have these glucose molecules inside in the dissolved form now this type of endocytosis now here from the lumen of intestines we have taken this water along with the glucose into the cell but it is glucose has been uh, has been taken into the cell in the form of in in the dissolved form that glucose was in the dissolved form there in the water and along with that water we have taken it inside that is why it is called as the cellular drinking so first type is phagocytosis that is cellular eating and second type is the pinocytosis that is cellular drinking now let us talk about the third type that is called as the receptor mediated endocytosis now receptor mediated endocytosis as the name indicates it is the endocytosis it is taking it is it is actually uh, when we take something into the cell but it is receptor mediated we need the help of receptors for taking these substances into the cell the best examples for this is actually hepatocytes the liver cells they actually take the ldl low density lipoproteins uh, when we are taking into the hepatocytes the low density lipoproteins for that we need this receptor mediated endocytosis but here in the uh, last lecture we have we have uh, talked about the examples in the kidney in the kidney tubules now here we are actually the second best example uh, for this uh, receptor mediated endocytosis is our kidney tubules the proximal convoluted tubule for the reabsorption option of materials uske liye jo hai main yahan pe proximal convoluted tubule ki hi example se aapko samjhaunga so receptor mediated endocytosis ke liye let me draw that structure again here we have the bowman's capsule here and after bowman's capsule we have the proximal convoluted tubule right so here is the lumen of the proximal convoluted tubule and here for example we have the cell which is present in the proximal convoluted tubule now what did i tell you there that in the bowman's capsule we are filtering plasma plasma pro uh, this this uh, the um, components of uh, plasma are filtered there for example water the electrolytes the nutrients are filtered there but sometimes for example we are filtering smaller uh, these proteins for example we have filtered insulin there we have filtered insulin or in some cases we have filtered hemoglobin there in normal cases hemoglobin should not be filtered in the bowman's capsule but suppose we have filtered hemoglobin uh, or we have filtered the insulin now what we want is <coughs> we don't want this insulin and hemoglobin to be excreted out we need this we need to take this insulin and hemoglobin back now for that 
there is no prime primary active transport there is no secondary active transport there is no simple diffusion there is no facilitated diffusion the only way we can take these proteins back into the cell here in the proximal convoluted tubule is actually the receptor mediated endocytosis now what happens is suppose we have to take this insulin back into the cell then back into the body we actually don't want this insulin to be excreted out through the urine now what happens is that we have the receptors present here in the proximal convoluted tubule like this and these receptors are for example particularly for the insulin right in this case we have to uh, reabsorb this insulin here here is the insulin receptors present on the luminal membrane of this cell which is present in the proximal convoluted tubule. Now what happens is that this insulin will go and bind on these receptors. Once this insulin binds on these receptors, these receptors inside the cell will send some signals actually and those signals will actually uh, what, what they do is they activate a protein there and that protein is called as clathrin protein. Right, that protein is called as clathrins. Clathrin protein. One more time. What did I tell you? That we need to take this insulin into the cell. That is endocytosis. Now this insulin can be taken into the cell with the help of these receptors. Jin receptors ke saath ye insulin bind hota hai. And when these, when this insulin binds on the receptor, these receptors into the cell send some signals or we can say that these receptors actually activate a special protein inside the cell membrane and that protein is called as the clathrin protein. Now what happens is that these clathrin proteins once activated they start pulling the cell membrane towards inside okay once they start pulling the cell membrane towards inside now what happens is we have a structure something like this we have the cell membrane pulled inside and we have these clathrin proteins here and then we have these receptors and bound to these receptors are, are is our insulin, insulin molecules, right? So these clathrins, these clathrin proteins, once they are activated and how they are activated, they will be activated once the insulin will bind on these receptors and these receptors will activate these proteins. <coughs> these clathrin proteins will start pulling the cell membrane towards inside and once the cell membrane will be pu pulled towards inside they will form a pit actually there and that pit is called as the clathrin coated pit it is called as clathrin coated pit clathrin coated pit now what happens once it continue pulling this cell membrane towards inside eventually what happens is that this cell membrane here actually will fuse together these two ends once we are once we are pulling it more and more and more these two ends will fuse together and we will take this vesicle inside and around this vesicle we have the clathrin proteins and inside the vesicle, we have these receptors along with these proteins, along with this insulin, right? Now, what happens is that this vesicle, mein jo hai, we have this, it is actually clathrin coated, this vesicle, clathrin protein coated vesicle. But once this vesicle comes inside, these clathrin, clathrin proteins, jo hai, they move from there because their job is done now. Ab unka jo hai, pe koi kaam nahi hai. So what they do is they actually, their job is to take the or pull the cell membrane towards inside and take this vesicle into the cell. Once this vesicle is into the cell, these clathrin proteins go back and they are, uh, they, they are actually uh, recycled back into the cell membrane 
to wait for more insulin or to wait for more proteins there and these clathrin proteins jo hai ab inka kaam ho gaya now they will go back to the cell membrane now we have this vesicle here and this vesicle inside the vesicle we have this uh, this receptors along with these proteins we have taken inside and in this case it is insulin right now after that this vesicle let me make it a bigger cell now this vesicle will come in contact with another vesicle and that vesicle is called as endosome right this vesicle is called as endosome and once it comes in contact with endosome it will again activate those those proton pumps and there will be hydrogen ions there will be protons going into these vesicles and they are proton atpases so that means they will require atp for that we have talked that about in the uh, in the uh, jo hai primary active transport and so it will come in contact with endosome एंडोजोम के साथ जब ये फ्यूज हो जाएगा तो इट विल एक्टिवेट दो जो है इस वेजिकुलर मेम्ब्रेन में जो है देर आर दो प्रोटोन ए टी पी एस एस प्रोटोन ए टी पी एस एस की से जो है वो प्रोटोन्स जो है अंदर आएंगे सो वट वट इज द जॉब ऑफ दीज प्रोटोन्स हियर दे विल एक्चुअली वीकन द बॉन्ड बिटवीन दीज रिसेप्टर्स एंड दिस प्रोटीन ओके सो वंस दीज प्रोटोन सपोज here is it is it is coming in contact with this vesicle now they are forming a common vesicle and inside we have again these receptors along with these proteins but in this vesicular membrane what we are doing is we are activating those proton pumps and those proton pumps will take in the hydrogen ions and once the hydrogen ions are coming into the vesicle what will happen is that these hydrogen ions that means the inside inside this vesicle it will become an acidic medium and that acidic medium will actually weaken the bond between the receptor and these proteins in this case between the receptor and the insulin after that what happens is that this vesicle will will actually when when we we, we are uh, weakening the bond between the receptor and the uh, protein what will happen is that these receptors will be separated from these proteins and these receptors will again be recycled back into the cell membrane and what happens to these proteins there are lysosomes again then this this vesicle will will come in contact with the lysosomes lysosomes will do the same job what we have done what they have done in the phagocytosis they will start breaking down these proteins these proteins will be broken down into amino acids and those amino acids will be recycled back in our body they will be reused back in our body right so we have taken the proteins inside the cell and these proteins we have taken with the help of these receptors so they are called as the receptor mediated endocytosis now let us talk about the exocytosis okay as mentioned earlier that exocytosis is actually when we are moving the substances out of the cell up to now we have seen that in endocytosis we have taken the materials into the cell in case of phagocytosis the example we have we have talked about is we have we have talked about the bacteria the bacteria was taken into the cell and in case of pinocytosis we have taken the water molecules along with, along with the dissolved glucose molecules into the cell that is cellular drinking and receptor mediated endocytosis may with the help of receptors we have taken certain proteins inside the cell and the examples i have told you is the ldl receptors for the uptake of ldl low density lipoproteins by the hepatocytes that is the liver cells and in case uh, of the um, proximal convoluted tubule we have talked about the uh, uptake of or uh, jo hai endocytosis of the uh, insulin uh, protein with the help of those uh, jo hai insulin receptors there fine अब हमारे पास जो है एक्सोसाइटोसिस में वी हैव टू टॉक अबाउट सेंडिंग दी थिंग्स मेटीरियल सब्सटेंसेस मैक्रो मॉलिक्यूल लार्जर सब्सटेंसेस आउट ऑफ द सेल नाउ सपोज हियर इज अ सेल एंड दिस सेल इज इन्वॉल्व नाउ सपोज दिस सेल इज एक्चुअली द एग्जाम्पल वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट फॉर दी एक्सोसाइटोसिस इज एक्चुअली बीटा सेल ऑफ आईलेट्स ऑफ लैंग नाउ सपोज दैट बीटा सेल इज एक्चुअली 
we, we all know that that beta cell is involved in the uh, secretion of in, this insulin. The insulin we were talking about there in the proximal convoluted tissue. Now that insulin in our body is, is synthesized and secreted by beta cells of islets of Langerhans. Now suppose here is the beta cell of islets of Langerhans or it is any other cell in our body which is actually involved in the secretion of certain proteins, certain hormones. Right. Now, here is this cell and this cell, we, we all know that the synthesis of proteins actually starts from the process of transcription there in the DNA. And after the process of transcription, there will be process of translation there in the ribosomes. For example, here is the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum. And that rough endoplasmic reticulum on the surface, it contains the ribosomes. And these ribosomes are involved in the synthesis of proteins or we can say it is involved in that uh, process of translation. And after that, we are forming that protein, for example, and that is, that, that is packed in the form of vesicles. In the form of vesicle, then that vesicle actually that goes into the Golgi apparatus or Golgi body. Here is the Golgi body. It goes inside and then it is process it further, there is further modifications of these proteins. We have talked this about, uh, about all this, uh, of the, the uh, functions of endoplasmic reticulum, the functions of Golgi apparatus there in the uh, videos of about the cell organelles. And then once it is processed, once, once it is modified inside the Golgi apparatus, now it is ready to be synthesized or it is ready to be secreted out of the cell and now we have suppose here is the protein and this protein is for example insulin. Now <coughs> this, <coughs> this insulin is packed in the form of vesicles. Now this vesicle we have to secrete this this insulin which is present in this vesicle, we have to secrete this insulin out of this cell and we have to send it to the different sides of the body. Right. Now this vesicle will be transported towards the cell membrane with the help of microtubules for example. Microtubules contain those motor proteins. We have dynein and kinesin and those motor proteins are actually involved in the uh, transport of substances, intracellular transport, transport of substances from one place to another place inside the cell. Now suppose here in this case this vesicle has to be transported from Golgi apparatus towards the cell membrane. And this vesicle will be transported towards the cell membrane and this vesicle will actually fuse with the cell membrane, right? The vesicular membrane will fuse with the cell membrane and what will happen is there will be a structure something like this. For example, it will fuse with the cell membrane, right? And eventually what happens is that there will be a, this, this fusion of vesicle will be something like this and then Inside this vesicle what we have is that is sent or that is secreted out of the cell and that this process is called as the exocytosis. So endocytosis is taking things inside with the help of phagocytosis, pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis and when we talk about the exocytosis it is actually the best example to understand this exocytosis process is actually the, uh, the hormones or the proteins which are secreted out of the cell Cell, which are synthesized inside the cell and then they have to be secreted out of the cell. The best example is hormones and those hormones are packed in the vesicles in the endoplasmic reticulum then in the Golgi apparatus and Golgi apparatus ke baad they are in the vesicles and then those vesicles are transported towards the cell membrane with the help of microtubules, with the help of dynein and kinesin and then that vesicle will fuse with the cell membrane and then after the fusion of this vesicle with the cell membrane, this protein is or this hormone is secreted out by this and this process is called as the exocytosis. So that is all about the vesicular transport. I hope it was clear. See you in the next lecture. Allah Hafiz.